Welcome back to the Sioux City Show. My name is Taylor Grody. I'm hosting this thing. Today on the show, we have the guys from New Canna. It is a CBD company in Sioux City. It's Dave Hall, Matt Hubert. So tell me about what you guys are doing. Wow. That's a big question. That's right. a big question. <laughs> yeah. so, There's a lot we're doing. Yeah. We're doing a lot. What, so like, what is CBD for the person who's just tuning in, just hearing about CBD for the first time so we can knock it out quick? CBD is cannabidiol. Uh, it's a acronym for cannabidiol, which is a element in the cannabis plant, mm-hmm. right? So everybody knows cannabis is, uh, some people think it's marijuana. Um, we know it as hemp. So the hemp plant carries with it some CBD, cannabidiol. And when that is extracted from the hemp plant, it's added to certain products. And yeah, we sell those products for a lot of benefits that it brings with it. Right. So CBD like doesn't get you stoned, right? It's a it's a totally different deal than it's like smoking pot. Like it's it's not THC, right? It's not THC. Okay. No THC in it. Yep. Yeah. yeah. So like what what you know, I always hear about uh, medical benefits of marijuana kind of being used as like a broad term. And, uh, you know, if you listen to like your stoner friend on Facebook, weed will cure everything from cancer to a uh, headache in the afternoon. But what what are like the proven medical benefits that somebody can really expect to get from like a CBD oil? I don't think there's any proven medical benefits. Mm-hmm. But to what be do totally you guys, honest. what type of hear, so uh, stories it, do you It's hear? really funny that you say that because like, you know, everybody, like your stoner friends say, mm-hmm. yeah, man, weed cures everything. Mm-hmm. So I was just at my doctor's office today and I asked him, hey, how many, how many patients that you have come in here and say, you know, I'm taking CBD oil now. And he's like, quite a few, quite a few come in and, and I've written some scripts for MedFarm. So, you know, oh, to word. clear things up, mm-hmm. MedFarm, that's not us. Like they carry THC in their product. Um, CBD is known to have its benefits for anxiety and for um, some depression and pain and inflammation, right? So Mm -hmm. cannabis, CBD is an anti-inflammatory. Oh, okay. So at its core. So inflammation causes a lot of just health issues in general. So CBD can alleviate some of those things. So we'll sell CBD to people that are saying like, yeah, you know, I've got some shoulder problems or my hip or my backs or, you know, I got pain. Okay. Well, here, take this tincture, take it twice a day, do it for two or three weeks and see what it does for you. And they do that and they may come back and say, you know, it didn't really help my back pain or yes, it totally helped my back pain. Or, you know, it may not help with that, but I'm sleeping a lot better mm-hmm. or my mood's a little bit better. Um, I, I used to have this weird thing with my wrist and now I don't. It's just so odd and it's very bizarre what it's doing. But it's helping in so many different ways for the pa- not patients, but for the people that we sell it to. Um, it's pretty remarkable. So I and there's just so many different benefits that it has. And us being who we are, we're not doctors. All we are is we know people that make really good hemp oil in Colorado. And beings that we know those people, we said. We need to provide the people in Sioux City the same benefit that you're providing the people in Colorado, right? Because we just signed a hemp bill that said, Iowa farmers grow hemp. It's an alternative crop that you can make money on and it provides benefits and it can make textiles. It can build things. It's an amazing plant that can do a lot of different things. Let's do this in Iowa. So Matt and I have traveled around and we know people in Colorado and we're very familiar with with the inner workings of cannabis so it helped to bring that to bridge that gap here to Sioux City so and there's so many options out there that when you're purchasing a CBD product you want to know where it comes from because there's no regulation right, right? The regulations are very thin. So people are taking advantage of people. And we wanted to be the company that said, stop, let us provide you a product that is good, Mm -hmm. right? That we know is real, that we know where it comes from. It's lab tested. We wanted to be a trusted source for CBD because there's so many sources that do not sell you. And we were just talking about this, that like a gas station, I'm not going to name any names on gas stations, but there's a gas station in Sioux city that has like CBD products in the window and, uh, they're ready for purchase and they're selling what they, a claim of CBD included in a product at a price that is just not feasible for somebody who knows the back end of what CBD costs as a commodity price. Right. Yep. Exactly. So there is like, there's a, there's a lot of distrust and especially like in any new market that pops up, uh, you know, there's a lot of, uh, 
a lot of hucksters in a gold rush, right? So exactly. I, I think that it's a it's a really good a really good thing for people to have like a local source that's telling people like this is what is in our product. This is the product you're getting, and this is the and, and like just the fact that you didn't make claims about this is what it helps this is what it exactly does for you and you need to get it if you have aches and pains or if you have anxiety put cbd on it every single day and that's going to take care of it because you're not right. doctors right so like right. you can't do anything but tell people like other people have had experiences that are exciting and it's a good exactly product for right. you and i think that there's also a, a problem with uh you know the the idea of telling people this product is derived from cannabis right that's a lot of red flags for a lot of like god-fearing sioux city people right so there's going to be people that want to put the brakes on it immediately when they hear that but there's also the understanding that there is not thc and you guys i understand are you have like thc tested pure no thc right so like there's there's the testing that says there's no psychoactive uh, material or element to this to this exactly. product, so that should be able to take some people's worry off of making the first step into seeing if CBD is the right product for what they're doing. I think it's funny how we started like so many years ago, and like when I was in high school, that was the devil lettuce. Like there was nothing. I mean, you that was a drug that you did not touch, right? Like, right. it's the stigma that follows cannabis, mm-hmm. and. Eh, it's just, but with science and the way that we can extract from plants and the, and the chemicals and the compounds that we can take from them with chromatography and different ways that you can do these things now, we can bring elements from pharmaceuticals that compete with pharmaceutical drugs. Mm-hmm. I mean, seriously, like this is the problem. We're in an opioid crisis in this country where I know multiple people that are battling opioid addiction and they are being overprescribed. We're trying to fight that. Not us as a company, but I think the country is trying to fight that. The doctors are trying to figure out a way. You know, everybody's trying to figure out a way to, to fight this. But if you can take a plant that will help you alleviate the cravings or help you with your pain or or your anxiety or your post-traumatic stress disorder or whatever it is you have, if you can start with a plant that will do that, regardless, you're doing something good for yourself. And I think we see that as a challenge, even though it's over overly regulated, we might see people that say you're doing something illegal, but we'll say that's okay. If it's illegal, take us down and then we'll figure it out from there. Because if it wasn't good, we're not going to be a business in any year. Yeah. We'll know that it'll be, it'll, it'll be glaring. So, but we both, Matt and I both know this is not the way that's going to be because we see it. If we literally see it when people come in and they say, this stuff works. Like I, I feel better. Like this is, this is helping me. Um, that's fine. Your doctor may tell you no, because their, their, um, what is it? Their health insurance or their medical insurance yeah, doesn't, mean, they're not covered. Yeah. They're Interesting. anyway, they're not covered for it. So mm-hmm. it's going to be difficult to get a prescription for cannabis through a doctor, yeah. but we'll get there we're just starting Mm -hmm. so we've introduced people to a product that we say here's an option for you a lesser expensive option granted maybe it's not totally legal i don't know Mm -hmm. it's kind of a gray area because there is like there has been some back and forth right where kim randall signs a bill that says that hemp is uh, not a schedule one narcotic and then you know the attorney general of iowa might say make some claims of it is schedule one but it's like that those two those two sentences are contradictory. They're contradictory. They can't right. have one without the other. How right? does that work? Exactly. Sure. Yeah. How does that work? And that's not at the federal level. Well, that's it's how it's been declassified. Uh, make sure at you the get federal the federal level. So yeah. I mean, it's between the feds and the state. It's there's all kinds of confusion. Mm-hmm. Go ahead and pull so, this. but we've got a lot of connections, you know, with our uh, our lawyers and lobbyists that that keep us with all the facts, give us a lot of confidence, and so we share that with everyone that comes in, so they feel a lot more comfortable. Interesting. So, Dave, you. You were the origin of New Canada, right? You started it from the ground and then Matt joined on as things were going on. Right. Yep. Right. So what got you what got you involved in it? Like what made you like take on because like you said, it's a gray area. So it could be like ultimately if the attorney general wants to get real crazy in Iowa, it can shut you. You know, it can be an end to it today. The very, very, very first start was my friend was diagnosed with brain cancer and we were ordering him cannabis oil 
from Portland, Oregon. And we were having a shift. And I said, dude, ship it to my house. I'll take the wrap for it. I'm going to. So my friends that I graduated with lived in Portland. They sent us cannabis oil. We were giving it to my buddy Andy for, I don't know, three or four months. He was supposed to live three months. He lived six, seven months. Um, I don't know. I can't contest it or, you know, say that it was the cannabis oil. But still, you know what? He liked it. It helped him eat. It gave him it gave him an appetite back. He wasn't totally sick. He did not do chemo. And uh, he said, yeah, if cancer is going to take me, I'm, uh, that's what's up. So we just gave him the natural and he lived an extra three or four months. And it was that was that was kind of it. And then I knew people in Colorado and um, Matt and I have traveled to Colorado to go snowboarding. So we have connections. And I'm saying we saw this this movement, right, of cannabis coming on board. We saw the hemp and we saw things that were happening. And we said, you know what? We can help Iowa farmers grow hemp. And in the same turn, we can turn that hemp into our products. Have a local company in which- Have like, a local I mean, company and this say- This whole economy is propped up on ag processing in Northwest Iowa. Absolutely. So it, it's just another We're avenue farmers, for ag processing. Farmers right? know how to grow things. Right. We know how to market and produce products with their- with their hemp. Mm-hmm. So that's what we do. We, we help farmers grow hemp in 2020. We take their hemp biomass, we put it into Nucana products mm-hmm. and we sell it on the market. So we help sell their biomass and we get our products for cheaper, which in turn, we are able to sell it to the marketplace at a lesser cost. That's the plan, right? Capitalism free market, baby. <laughs> Capitalism right. free market, yeah. baby. Yeah. That's, that's it. Okay. Mm-hmm. Welcome competition, but don't, sell CBD at a gas station with what you say 500 milligrams is for $15 because Matt and I both know that you cannot sell 500 milligrams of CBD for $15. Mm -hmm. There's no way. Like the equivalent would be like if you went, if you were driving down the interstate in one gas station was was selling gas for 99 cents, right? Like you know that they're not buying it. Like that's not real gasoline, right? right? That is exactly right. So we tell consumers out there to be careful. If you're going to buy a CBD product, they have to be, they have to be trusted. You have to be able to be, provide a COA, a certificate of analysis, lab reports of where that cannabis came from. All of the products that we sell are grown, extracted, and produced in Colorado mm-hmm. within like a 50 mile radius. So um, there are extracts that come from Europe and China and people are buying these extracts for not a lot of money Mm -hmm. we don't know where they're we don't know what they're extracted with we don't know where they're coming from they're not tracked we don't know what 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 you know you don't know what you're putting in your body so Mm -hmm. anyway that's what we weigh our business on is a trusted company that sells quality cbd that's basically it yeah word right so like i guess like the unfortunate thing would be when you talk about like there's a gas station that's selling what's marketed as a cbd product that if you're unfamiliar with the CBD world, you might think, uh, okay, so that's CBD, right? And, uh, but then you hear somebody on a podcast say like, oh, that's not real CBD, that's gray market CBD, it's a shady source. Well, that just moves the whole ter- the industry back into a shady realm in the eyes of the average consumer, right? Exactly so that's right. unfortunate, but like what, what can the average person do to really educate themselves about like what a quality product is and what they might be able to expect. Like where, where does that information come from? Yeah. It, you have to do some of your own research. It's kind mm-hmm. of like uh, craft breweries, you yeah. know, you, you tour around, you try to find the best ones. Um, of course there's beer that's going to be lower quality. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, there's a King Cobra, a Colt 45 or something, but that doesn't really take down the whole beer industry. It just shows you, who the winners are mm-hmm. and so there's just a whole spectrum of products there um, is. and so now uh, going online you can do lots of research yeah. um, but just talking to the people go into their store and meet them so yeah if you can find out who's making it and where the products are from that's really a good sign it's really helpful to know that also like so the certificate of analysis that we're talking about right so as for the coa how is their product extracted is it extracted using ethanol Is it extracted using CO2? What is the extraction process that they're using to get that final product, right? Ask for a pesticide test because the hemp that's grown, we don't know where those fields are at. We don't know if they're regulated by any type of agricultural committee or anything. All of the products that we sell are are regulated by the Department of Agriculture of Colorado. So, um, 
So they have to meet a certain criteria. They're not a lab- they're not able to use certain pesticides and herbicides. So those things, um, obviously going forward, looking a year down the road, we're looking for Iowa farmers with organic ground. So we can be certified organic hemp is, is worth a lot of money mm-hmm. on the market. So we want to help farmers be profitable by selling a product that is organic. And if we can do that and we can make an organic product, that's really good. So like anecdotally, what type of, what type of benefits have people seen? Cause I, I guess one that I'm familiar with is uh, the host of a podcast called fighter and the kid, his name is Brandon Shaw. He used to be an MMA fighter. Sure. Um, he had a yep. son who like was having like the like seizure a day, a couple seizures a day. Right. That like was uncontrolled. And it's like your worst nightmare having a two year old kid who like will not stop having seizures makes you question like, their lifespan, their like what the rest of their life looks like, right? And they went through the traditional routes of uh, treating epilepsy, that kind of stuff, and nothing was working. They use they introduce CBD, seizures go away. So like you know that's even though there's not like FDA double blind placebo studies done on it that you can absolutely say like it will do this for you. This is what it does. Um, like yep. what type of anecdotal evidence have you guys seen in that type of realm? So when we first started, we're going to talk about Maddie Bomey. Right. So when we first started, uh, there's a young girl in Lamar's Iowa. Young, I say young cause I'm old now, but younger girl, uh, maybe just getting into high school. Right. Okay. Um, I don't know if anybody's seen the documentary brain on fire where it's autoimmune encephalitis of the brain. So your, your good antibodies attack your brain. They think it's a foreign object. So, um, the story goes really long and it's really hard to kind of go through it, but we're coming out with a documentary with her. Uh, we filmed it. It's coming out soon. Um, she was one of our first to buy our products. When we met her, she was buying products from a back alley, from a guy, their family had been through every hospital, Mayo Clinic, Sioux Falls, different dietitians. They did not know what was wrong with her. They literally didn't because this is something that is so undiagnosed. They don't teach it in med school. So these doctors did not know. They finally got a diagnosis. What you have is autoimmune encephalitis of the brain. She couldn't pick a pin up and write. She'd be standing in the doorway when they come home. She can't move. Her head was hurting so bad. She'd have ice packs buried on her head. She'd be banging her head against the wall. Her family was in disarray. And I am not kidding you. And she told me, she's like, this stuff saved my life. She showed me a bottle of Bluebird. Bluebird, a company in Colorado. I was like this is insane. I was like, really? She goes, absolutely. When I take this CBD oil, I'm not going to say it cures her, Mm -hmm. but her symptoms are very few and far between now. So I said, okay, we're going to give you Nucana. We want you to take it. She's like on it. She's been taking it for a year and a half now. So what I understand from it is that her steroid intake has gone from like upper hundred milligrams down to like 20 to 30 milligrams. Wow. So steroids give you that moon face that, I mean, oh, I mean terrible they, they after the effects. structure of your body. Yeah. Huge, terrible after, or, uh, yeah, just bad. But bad, they can bad, make bad. you hit some dingers for the Padres. Oh, absolutely. Right? Dude. Barry you Bonds. Can, let's go. Barry all day. Balls. Yeah. yeah. So, but so she was able to do that replacing with CBD oil mm-hmm. that we have the documentary. There's freezer bags full of, pharmaceuticals wiped away with CBD and steroids and maybe a few other drugs. She does. She has infusions and things like this, but that is one of those things where you say this can't be a placebo. There's no way. And at that point, what does it matter? Why does it matter? And that's what her parents say. I don't care if it's illegal. I will do anything to give my daughter a life that she's back at school, she's working, she's driving, she's going to college. She's, she's, uh, she's doing all kinds of cool stuff. She speaks at a lot of engagements that we have. And it's such an inspiration to us as a company to be able to provide people products like that and their families and say, you know what, you've got a chance in life. And that's our slogan is life is waiting. So some people are looking out of a glass window. They're seeing everybody live their life. They're living, they're living joyously and they're looking at themselves and they're like, you know, they're inside their own head and they're like, I wish that I had that. Right. So, you know what, we're not going to say that that's going to be a life changer, but you know what, it's something that you can try. Right. So it's, it's, 
it's some type of hope, whatever. Yeah. So anyway, that was one anecdotal, I think, experience that really kicked off things. I mean, I think that we need to, like, as a culture, figure out if it's anti-inflammatory, the amount of Americans who take NSAIDs daily <laughs> is dangerous, right? Like, I'm I'm one of those people. Like, I take NSAIDs often. I got a bad foot on me. So, like, some mornings it's tough to get out of bed unless I have, like, the four ibuprofen before I start my day. And I think about it every IB time. Ibuprofen's bad for you, bro. Every time I take those pills, I'm like, it's not good for this, you. There goes the liver. There goes the liver. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, I yep. live my life hard. So, but that, it's not terrible if you take, you know, in limited amounts. But yeah, yeah. But, but yeah, like, it's still. just getting people off of that, you know, and replacing it. If, if it does, if CBD does have the anti inflammatories properties needed for them to find the relief that they're currently finding from NSAIDs, automatically it's a plus, right? For the whole world. How do we get there? How uh, do we get there? What's it going to take? You know what we did with fluoride? Yeah, right. CBD. Put in the water. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, like, I guess I'm, I, I'm not, I'm certainly not a naysayer. That's like not even in the ballpark, but like, I'm uh, a skeptic of when anybody goes like, this is, this is the miracle cure. But when you do hear things like, like the Brennan shop, like, right. Even like, like I said, with, with uh, the young girl in the Mars, if, if that's, if that's a placebo, whatever, if it's positive, it's working. But like when you start talking about like a two year old doing it, what possible placebo effect is, you know, a, a well, kid who's been through medical round after medical round, like he's not going to go like, oh, finally some pot, you know, mm-hmm. like, that's finally what my doctor was, said. Like, my yeah. doctor said there is a thing where if a cancer patient comes in and says, you got two weeks, boom, they'll dive. Yeah. But if you say, hey, you've got a chance, we're going to try this new drug. Whew, it's it's the will to live, yeah. the spirit. Right. So if you send somebody some cannabis oil and say, hey, here you go, this is going to be your next this is going to be your next best thing here. You're, you're mm-hmm. going to live. Their willpower will bring them up enough. Yeah. Well, that's literally- only so much, right? Yeah. But there can only be so many times that you can do that. And then when it does actually work, it's, there's something there. Mm-hmm. So yeah. that's, that's literally why they do the uh, double blind placebo studies Absolutely. because like the, just the doctor's demeanor when handing you a pill can affect the outcome of the trial. So that's right. why they need the doctors to not know if it's a placebo or not as well. There's like an independent lab that sends out pills that only they know if it's a it's placebo amazing. or a real one. But yeah, it's crazy, man. Yeah. That- so another another anecdotal uh, experience I have is what, I have a golden retriever, right? So my dog gets high anxiety during thunderstorms, 4th of July. And um, so when we first started, my dog's tripping, mm-hmm. freaking out, tremoring, um, like literally tremoring. Yeah whole body tremors. I gave the dog some CBD, about a half a dropper. And literally within a minute, two minutes, the dog stopped tremoring. So dogs don't, I don't know if they have a placebo effect. I really don't think so. So, and that right there, and it's for pets. A lot of people give their pets CBD. You're not supposed to give your pets THC. Don't do that. I will not. Don't give your pets THC. (laughs) I will not. So CBD for pets, it's very beneficial. Too, I, so. I got a Doberman at home who, when she hears yeah, fireworks. Yeah, where's she at? Dog. I thought I'd see her today. Well, she got an anxiety. Now, now that I know I could have given her CBD, <laughs> she'd be laying on the rug over there. It's a whole different story. Right. But around the right. 4th of July, man, we live on the west side. You would think, oh, man. You would think my dog That's just got zone, back bro. from her third tour in I- Iraq, like the way that she reacts to fireworks. I'm like, Jesus, Ramon, That's what terrible. kind of ghetto lifestyle have you been living that you're so scared of these things and it's gunshots every time? A Calm lot down, of people kid. deal with that, man. Yeah. They're yeah. pets or that's really a lot of people during 4th of July. We did that. We said, Hey, come in, um, 4th of July special on dog tinctures, dog treats. And oh, we're, yeah. Big yeah. Turnout. I mean, big turnout. Shoot. I'm, I'm kind of like retroactively worrying. I think, and I should have been messing around with that because, uh, I mean, I, I did the, uh, the Afghanistan trip when I was 22 and occasionally still like if I'm taking an afternoon nap and a, and a firework goes off and like, wakes me up from the nap it's like oh shit where am i you know it's, a, it's that immediate heart race so maybe i should start taking the cbds before the uh, afternoon nap heck yeah yeah oh yeah that's yeah. a good, good call that would trip me out too though yeah it's, it's a, it'll you're laying well, there all of a sudden boom and i live right over on the west side so kids get a little bit more reckless with the fireworks than they do over in other parts of town but uh, oh yeah yeah so it's i mean it's got its moments yeah definitely yeah. so uh like what you know, you guys being a Sioux City company, like what, where are you guys at? Like, what's the, what's the whole process looking like, I guess? What do you think? Where man? are we at right now? Wow. Uh, well, it's been a roller coaster, bro. <laughs> yeah. So, you, I mean, like you guys are physically at the Ho-Chunk building, right? Right. Yeah. We've, we're on our third office now at the Ho-Chunk yep. building, but we're, we've got uh, enough space. Uh, we're in a suite 223. 
two two three. So yeah. um, right by the coffee shop. Right. AR fifteen bullet. Two two three. Two two three. Yeah. Yep. That's right. That's gangster guys. That's gangster. <laughs> that's right. right there. Gangster. You fall. It's two two three bullet. Yeah. I knew it. Yeah. So Matt, um, he's in the yoga community. So huge into health and wellness. Um, found some really good resellers in the yoga industry. Evo or Evolve. Evolve. Yeah. Excuse me. Evolve. Um, yeah. I mean, actually, that's a perfect medium for CBD. That whole crowd there has has taken it on. I think it's right. Yeah, the whole health and wellness scene—they really get it Uh, because that's what CBD is all about. Yeah, Um, it really helps. That's why I use it mainly as the topicals, the ointments for reducing the inflammation before and after yoga. Um, and so that's really where we're at right now is working with the health and wellness, a lot of gyms in the area. Yeah. Uh, Top tier fitness. Okay. Yep. And I I guess like, I just want to make this clear again. It is not, it contains no psychoactive ingredients. It will not get you high. It is not. It comes from the same plant that pot comes from, but it is not weed. So anybody listening, it is not the same. Right. It is not a drug. It is it not. Don't get you high. It's not going to get you stoned. I've tried. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But uh, I mean, yeah, because it's like, I just think that there's still such a stigma. Like, even though we've seen, uh, I guess, like the, the legalization of marijuana in general, right, is that you see like states like Colorado, Oregon, whatever, who, who legalize it, have great results, tax dollars wise. I mean, there's negatives that you can that you can point to. But uh, the doomsday theorists that uh, point to, like, we cannot legalize pot because it's going to make every kid a pothead. They get proven wrong by statistics every time in states, which it has been true. But we're still fighting a stigma, like, in uh, in the state of Iowa, where our governor says, I used to be an alcoholic, so that's why I'm never going to legalize marijuana. And it's like, why are you connecting A to B? There's a lot of there's a lot of crack addicts in the world, too. Like, that doesn't mean the beer should be illegal. You know what I mean? Right. So it's just it's just confusing that how that that's that's why, like, I just think there's such a stigma around around a specific plant that like one thing being derived from the same plant as another is just right. Hard to rationalize. for. I think people with addiction issues are really the hardest to win over because they're living very healthy lifestyles. Now, hopefully they didn't just switch to cigarettes or something, but. Uh, people that aren't drinking anymore or using any illicit drugs, they're not so quick to go to CBD. Right. Um, but it's not too hard to tell them that, you know, there's no psychoactive uh, ingredients. You're not going to get high. And there's it's just no addictive properties to it. Right. And so um, it's really just turning those people over is really the, the yeah. one of the, the biggest hurdles. Yeah. I think social media has helped. I think a lot of the Internet and a lot of things that have, that have come along have really helped move the movement. Like, and and as far as getting high in marijuana, that has its own place, right? CBD has its own place. CBD is an anti-inflammatory. It's an extract from a plant that that plant also has a property that will get you high. Mm -hmm. But what we're doing is we're extracting an element from that plant that doesn't. So it has its own. And I can't say that it doesn't have a psychotropic effect because it, has been known to give you a calming sense, yeah. right? And it makes you a little bit, not woozy, but it'll give you just a little bit of a calmness. Mm-hmm. So, and maybe that's not everybody. And everybody's system's different. So everybody has an inherent- Because it really doesn't for me. Like, right. I mean, yeah. Everybody has an inherent cannabinoid system in them, mm-hmm. right? So, um, and I wish I could talk in medical terminology, but I just don't have that intelligence. But uptake inhibitors and serotonin levels and all of these different- um, receptors you have in your body react to cannabis. And when you introduce cannabis to your body, your receptors take it in as it does with everything you take caffeine or alcohol or whatever. But it, it, what it does is it helps balance. It helps maintain homeostasis in your body. Okay. So that is a lot of what, and there's a lot of, there's so many YouTube videos out there that you can watch about what how people explain it. Right. So anyway, it's, it has to do with the endocannabinoid system in your body and the receptors in your brain and in your immune system that react with cannabis and however your body does with that will do whatever it does. Maybe give you benefits in sleep, maybe give you benefits in pain relief. It may be doing a lot of different things, but I, I urge anybody that is thinking about it to come check us out, 
ask Matt questions. I'm not there most of the time. Um, and Matt's very knowledgeable about the product. Mm -hmm. And it's definitely something to at least ex at least experiment with, right? Yeah. I mean, I, I hate oh, using that word, but honestly, that's what it is. Now imagine yeah. this. It's a rainy, it's a rainy afternoon turning into a rainy evening. They go in, they buy some CBD edibles for Matt. They go home, they take the CBD edibles. They put Jimi Hendrix, <laughs> Electric Ladyland on the vinyl record player. They go, yes. they sit outside on the screened in porch. It's raining outside. It's getting to be evening. They throw on some low light. Is that the perfect time to try CBD oil for the first time? Is that going to give you the best effect? <laughs> hey, uh, I think you know, whatever. I think that sounds like a good time. Oh, yeah. I think it sounds so, like a great time. But you know, or you could just uh, you know take a gummy right before you have a meeting just to kill some anxiety. Right before you're going to take your kids to the soccer game and all the coaches are freaking out and you're mm -hmm. ready to just chill out, right. watch your kid play some soccer. There we go. There we go. There's so many different options for taking CBD. It's not even funny. One time, I was 13 years old. I went to my youngest sister and a soccer game. And I hated going. That's the last place you want to be when you're 13 years old watching your six-year-old play, six-year-old oh, sister well, yeah. play three-on-three -three soccer, whatever, right? But at the field behind us, there was a mom who lost her mind. She ran out on the field, stole the ball from the referee, said, if you're not going to call the fouls, my kid's not going to play this goddamn game. Ran off the field with the soccer ball. You're 13 the, years old and saw this. Oh, yeah. And the referee, not a grown-up. It was like a 12-year-old girl who was <laughs> refing the six-year-old girl league, right? She's out there bawling. And then, like, so then everybody on the field has no idea what to do because the ball just went to the out to the parking lot with this mom, right? <laughs> right. And I can't think of a better person to there try CBD That's for it. the first time. Hey, whatever she's watching this, so hey. <laughs> whatever right. anxiety we'll caused shot. that, my yeah, God. I yeah. know, I know. And don't want to make a sales pitch, but honestly, like, in reality, so we all have friends, we all have people that we know that have battled addiction, alcoholism, battle something in their life, depression, Crohn's, just all different kinds gout. of things. So, gout. Gout. Yeah. I don't know what it does for gout. I know gout's uric acid. I Unfortunately, know. not much. Dude. Yeah. That's a brutal Dog, one, I, would, I, would, that's, that's a I mean, that's one. my NSAID thing. Gout's that's why bad. I said, yeah. But anything. Yeah. I mean, honestly, like, it, it, it's, it's not where it's going to be ex too expensive to at least go. But if you do it, mm -hmm. you do it consistently. You don't take it and be like, oh, I took it. didn't do anything for me. You have to take CBD consistently twice a day, every day for at least two to three weeks. And then, only then can you say, that didn't do anything for me. Make your, yeah, make but you your know what? From You're there. out 40, 50 bucks. All right. It was worth a try. Yeah. That's, I mean, basically, right, Matt? I mean, when you yeah. think. Oh, yeah. That's, that's what I mean, that's we, basically that's it. What I guess recommend. whatever yeah. medical affliction you're th talking about, like, that's that's cheaper than most copays to go see the doctor for it's, any, it's any two medical. Two copays. Yeah, right? yeah. Yeah. For me, old open market, that's a that's a very cheap trip to the doctor. So I'd be taking that all day. Yeah. Every yeah. time something comes up for me, I'm like, God. Got to take out a second mortgage, you know? Yeah, that's it's crazy. Yeah. It's crazy. I just paid $25 to go see him today. And what what do I do? I went in there and talked to him just so I can get my prescription re-up because mm -hmm. it's been six months. It's time to pay your $25. My man. Re-up your new time. Okay, so what's mm -hmm. your address the same? Yep, yep. Mm -hmm. 25 bucks. Yep. Anyway. My doctor makes me take a drug test. Does he? Yeah, to make sure I'm taking drugs. <laughs> oh. Yes. I swear to God. Wow. I swear to God. I mean, you have wow. to. You I, have every to time I there. comment, I'm like, I this is this is strange. This is <laughs> a this is a reverse drug test, making sure I'm Ooh. on them. Yeah. Okay. I should wow. go in and ask for a drug test sometime. I've been taking the CBD. I tell them every time. Yep, on that CBD. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know what do you think? Mm -hmm. Well, if it works, keep taking it. And that's what he told his patients when they come in and they say, "Yes, I'm taking CBD." Um, I say, "So what do you tell them?" I saw if it works, keep taking it. Yeah, because well, I guess, you know, when you say that there's like it? not, there's not proven FDA studies that it can show exactly what the benefits are. Exactly. Is there, I mean, even anecdotally, is, is there any like red flags that people should be worried about? I mean, like, yes, you guys can play yes, devil's advocate for yourselves. I think that that's probably like, I mean, to be fair, you know, in the fair spirit of things, like what is like the worst case scenario that some people say? There like, is some reinteraction to your liver with this. There so, is? Yeah. Okay. So if you're on a drug that I think you have to take, test your liver enzyme levels. Mm -hmm. I think that is something so that like people dealing with cirrhosis is probably a, maybe a something like that. Okay. Well, whatever the P450 enzyme is in your liver, mm -hmm. liver. So the way that you metabolize the drugs that you're on, if they're something to do with your liver functions, 
I think it's something that you should probably consult with your doctor first. You should always consult with your doctor yeah. before taking anything. So, so you should at the consult with your doctor. Yeah. If you're any concern about anything, you should always consult your doctor before taking anything, right? CBD including. But um, I do know that there is, but I've read, I guess I've read on the internet, um, P450 enzymes and your liver enzymes. If you're taking something that regulates that or does something with that, then you should, because it does interact with your liver. So, All right. Okay. Yep. Okay. I don't know how much. People with peanut allergies, get out of here. Just, yeah. Yeah. Come on. It's okay. Yeah. Yeah. You're Darwin not going to, I don't think you're going to overdose. I mean, no. I hate to make that claim, but. Yeah. Okay. Well, okay. Pretty I've crazy. Had issues like that before. So. so are you guys like hiring people or what's, what's going on? Are we, are we creating jobs for Sioux city? Come on. What do we need? <sighs> that's what we need to do. Yeah. I mean, that's, is that, that's is that the, the goal. future? Is that the, that's, I mean, that's where we're headed. Yeah. Okay. And, know, and growing hemp in Iowa, creating what does that jobs. Industry wise. Like, does that, you know, is it's, because there is still like, it's a gray, it's a gray area still. So like, what is, what is the future of like, what does the road forward look like to positively benefit the CBD industry and to, and, and Iowa and Sioux city in particular, does it, it, does it come from a top down Kim Reynolds needs to clear up the stance on it. Does it come up from, uh, uh just, I guess like widespread usage in the community, I guess, where, where's that, where's the start feel like it is for you guys? I'm not worried about uh, CBD or any cannabis issues. We know that it's going to be ironed out here in the next couple of months. So everything is squared away. There's a lot of opportunities where it's not gray. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of states are full on. Um, we can we can send hemp, you know, across interstate lines now. And so there's just a lot of federal roadblocks that are gone now. And now it's just the Department of Ag in each state that's just slowly figuring everything out. Um, but everything's going to be great. And yeah. you know, we're going to be manufacturing here in Iowa and, and giving jobs to local people. And so that's really what it's all about. Local products. Again, a craft industry. Mm -hmm. And so. I mean, I guess in terms of like hemp and hemp production, like we're in the congressionally, I think we're in the second most ag producing district in the country. Uh, con uh, in the congressional right. district, so Northwest Iowa in general. Um, what does what does the adoption of hemp for farmers look like? Is that like a cash crop for the the area? I mean, because last year we paid almost what twenty billion, sixty billion dollars to keep soybeans and soybeans, grain elevers in North, in Northwest yeah. Iowa. So like, is this a right. replacement crop? I guess uh, or this is, is a supplemental crop. This okay. is an alternative crop. So when you look at the business as it sits today. You have growers in legal states growing hemp, which Minnesota's on board now. Nebraska's going to be on board. Iowa. We're going to grow hemp. There's going to be industry that grows outside of what our business model is for CBD. There'll be textiles. There will be all of that. Um, but the biomass in high, everybody's growing for high CBD, right? That's that's just bottom line. We don't have decorticators. We don't have the equipment. We don't have the infrastructure to build out to compete in a market for textiles and bioplastics. We'll get there. We're just not there yet. So the money right now for the farmer is in CBD. So what we're proposing, what our long-term vision will be is to be a supplier of high quality cannabidiol products, topical, food grade, um, that can be sold in an open market that will benefit everybody that will be used, that will be produced, grown, produced in Iowa, extracted, maybe not by us. We're not into an extraction facility. We want the extractors to extract the plants. We'll help the farmer bridge the gap to sell the biomass to the extractor. The extractor will give us the extracts. We'll make our products with those. We're in talks with different entities to move, we have already put a position out to not only be an Iowa company, because this regulation you're talking about has got us a little bit spooked. Yeah. We're looking at this saying, Iowa looks like, the attorney general looks like he is going to make a position to say that CBD is a schedule one narcotic and that they will shut us down. Mm -hmm. But here's what, I, what, here's what we'll say to that, is that that is fine. CBD will be continued to be sold from the trunks of cars and from everywhere else, 
and you will not get any tax revenue from it. And just and so we'll, we're clear, CBD is worse than cocaine? <laughs> CBD is right so, along man. the same lines <laughs> right. as cocaine, yeah. my man. Yeah. So anyway, we will make a transition. We will move. We will shift our business model to other states and we will pay those state taxes and we will not pay Iowa tax for anything we sell. Mm-hmm. Right now, we're currently paying Iowa taxes for everything we sell. Yeah. As soon as the attorney general or whoever comes in and says, you cannot sell this in Sioux City, Iowa anymore. Sorry, you are shut down. Mm-hmm. No, we're not. South Sioux. We're out. Yeah. We're gone. We're right here. Mm-hmm. Our model is on the internet. Our model is in another state that's legal. And guess what, Iowa? You just missed out on a huge opportunity. Yeah. So, and, but how do you sell a product? How do you say you can grow corn, but you can't sell cream corn in a can? Yeah. How right. do you grow hemp and not be able to sell that hemp in the state that you grow it in? Yeah. I'm confused. Mm-hmm. So if Perfect. anybody's got that answer, I, I, need, <laughs> I need answers because that doesn't make any sense to me. Let's Somebody's got to China. tell me. Right. Yeah. Take that, China. Take right. that, China. You don't China. get any more soybeans. How do you like that? How do you like that? Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. It's It's crazy. Yeah. It's just not It doesn't make any sense. And I love it that we're having this conversation because we need to be able to get those questions answered. The banks need those questions answered. We deal with banks every day. We've been shut down three times. Mm -hmm. Everybody has. Dude, we know this industry well. We know the people in the industry. They are getting shut down. We are getting shut down. Mm -hmm. But guess what? When we get shut down, another one picks us up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. This is just, it's just a rabbit hole, dude. And we're just constantly chasing our tail, but we're still making it. Yeah. And it's, it's so funny because like, uh, I know a few people that, uh, were in the, in the position where they had some large amounts of liquid cash, uh, during the, uh, dispensary boom in Colorado when, sure. when like THC was legalized and stuff. And they were all like, dude, we were printing money, giving, giving cash loans to any dispensary startup because like, yep. yeah, we're going to see that money within six months and we're getting 20% back on it. And it's exactly like, right. yeah, so it's just crazy that like we're in this, I, I just, I always feel like, man, I'm a capitalist. I'm a, I'm a real big capitalist. And the fact that these other institutions and like which a, a Republican governor, uh, banks in general, are all supposedly for free market, supposedly open market, capitalism. Supposedly for free market. Right. And they're like, what we're is leaving money them? on the table. I think it might have something to do with pharma, pharmaceutical lobbyists. I don't know. I mean, right. not to play conspiracy theorists. You know but, what? I, I mean, and I don't play the conspiracy theory thing either. Yeah. And I just, and I tend to believe, what is it, dude? Mm-hmm. Is it religion? Is it constituents? Is it pharmaceutical companies? Who is telling you that this can't move forward? I understand that your schools and you think that this is going to be harm with education and mm-hmm. and we're, our our citizens are going to be impacted. I'm not seeing it. I'm, I'm that's what I'm saying. It's like we it's have a we fear. have like there's that's a state it it's a fear, where you can look at right? and say yeah is that it's what a happened? Fear. Yeah, yeah. We're scared. Well, I mean, it's like I guess like any. Most people can tell you, like, uh, who aren't on the uh, weed is the devil bandwagon, who, like, it's not not my thing. But I can tell you that William Randolph Hearst had a big part in, uh, oh, you know my I mean? goodness. And then, like, oh, you can look back at the origins of it, and it's like, how did they get people scared of scared of weed in the first place? Oh, they yeah. called cannabis marijuana. And right. why? Changed because it sounds like a Mexican name. Yeah. And, you know, I can't think of anybody else who gets people scared of something that sounds a little bit vaguely Hispanic. But, you know, it's <laughs> yeah. like, oh, you call it a, we call it marijuana. And then what happens when we call it marijuana? We say that uh, Mexican people and black people are smoking it and they want to have their way with white women. Right. And we yeah. put all those stories out in the news. And this and we is create true. This really stories. happened. Yeah, this, this is, is amazing. All fake. This is this really, is all this really, true. really happened. And, yeah. and then it's still it's those, truth. it still persists today. And that's like. I mean, right. I mean, I don't, has nobody stopped to wonder why, like, we know it's called cannabis, but why is it always called marijuana? And it's like, oh, it dates back to, it literally dates back to a smear campaign by somebody who owned so much uh, paper, paper had so much of an yeah. industry, interest in the paper industry that they shut down the hemp industry. And that's like, and they that's all you really need to know well, They own the newspapers. Yeah. It's like, right. how they own we, the newspapers. How, yeah, yeah. It's crazy. They own man. the media. Yeah. That's right. So. It's, it was one of those things we're climbing ourselves out of this. So when we take a deep dive into this, like, okay, so Matt and I are skateboarders from back in the day, right? Not necessarily saying that we're rule breakers, but we are huge potheads. A little bit innovators. Yeah. Yeah. DIY, do it yourself, yeah. right? 
create, create, right? So we look at this, I have kids, I have a family, I drive these roads every day, I see the parks in this area, I see the community, I see in a lot of opportunity, I see people that don't have jobs that could use jobs. I see people that are arrested for marijuana that can't get jobs because they have a, a pot conviction. Um, I see drug testing going on at facilities that once you get tested and, you're, and you get popped for marijuana, you're out of a job. There is a lot of things that need to change in the marijuana sector of this thing. And I think I jumped from skateboarding to this but whatever but it's a, it's the thing a, it's is an inherent distrust in the system it's it's, 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 right. it's not us trusting, trying to yeah. grow from a small business into bringing in tax revenue and revenue into this city like sioux city is not it is stagnant it is flat we have mm-hmm. a casino yep great casino we have a lot of hotels where are the small businesses Where's the industry at? Right. Where is our industry at? We need industrial growth in this town or we are going to just lay flat, scared and asking for permission to do anything until we, Matt, myself, Taylor Grody, do something about it and say, you know what? We're done. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to take an industry. We're going to grow it here in this in this state, and we're going to actually do something with it. Right. That's basically what we're doing, and we're not asking for permission. We're basically asking for forgiveness. Yeah. <laughs> at this point. <laughs> well, and I mean, just a just a, I guess, go along with your point is that I just get I get extremely scared being uh, somebody who's 28 from Sioux City, Iowa, who still lives in Sioux City, Iowa, started a company in Sioux City, Iowa, does decently well for himself in Sioux City, Iowa, and. Most of my friends no longer live here because they went None to college, they got degrees, here. and they wanted to go somewhere where there's something for them, right? Mm-hmm. And yep. so we live in we live in a district that is currently propped up by agriculture, ag processing, right? We have every possibility in the world, every ability in the world to create high growth industries around agriculture and ag processing. Why are we not the number one ag tech producing district? or producing area in the country. Why is why is every John Deere case, uh, whatever tractor company, not sending all of their top researchers here? Like last year, or two years ago, uh, J.D. Schulten used to say the statistic is like, like 1,200 kids graduated from uh, Iowa State with technology degrees. The next year, less than 300 of those kids were still living in the state of Iowa. And it's because there's not the, the opportunity for jobs that benefit them in this area. Like, along with agriculture and ag or ag processing. We are, You're heavily, we are heavily regulated, Taylor. Yep, yep. We're heavily regulated. Mm-hmm. It's very difficult to start a company here right. in Sioux City when you have heavily regulated regulation coming down on you. If you, I worked for a company in South Sioux, moved from Sioux City, Lightform, and the foam that they were producing was regulated to the point to where for DOT projects, you had to have certain specs, you had to have certain testing and you had to pay certain fees. Mm -hmm. There is so much regulation that comes down on things that can slow company growth, right? We need to, we need to, we need to, this is where I think hemp, which was such a decision only because I think that regulation, this is such a heavily regulated, don't ever get into dope dude, (laughs) ever. Yeah. So it's just super, super challenging, Mm -hmm. but the future of hemp in Iowa is a huge potential. Yeah. It's a huge potential. When we look at, we went to NOCO show in Denver, Colorado, and we saw the booths and we saw the companies and we saw the wow. products that they were making. And you saw like the, saw the, the John Deere was there. You could see all the oh, heavy hitters were dude, there, you know, they, so it's really going it's on. It's serious business. It's serious, serious business. This is no hippie pot smoker mm-hmm. bullshit. This is real games we're talking about and when we're talking about thirty eight thousand dollars profit from an acre Mm -hmm. this is real money and this is where we're going to grow this is what we're going to do to do and we're going to help farmers in iowa grow we're going to take our products and we're going to build them into awesome products Mm -hmm. and we're going to do it right but unfortunately it's really tough to get that started when when you have top-down leadership who's saying that uh who's equating uh the production of hemp to alcoholism and having three yeah. DUIs. Yes. A Just doesn't yes. connect to B there. It's yes. a scare yeah. tactic. And it's fake. It's not a false You won't be able to do it. You only have right. five dispensaries that can grow that. Guess what? You can't grow that. You can't sell it. Only this one, this one, and this one, owned by the same company, can sell that. Mm-hmm. 
So that seems like a monopoly to me. Let me yeah, ask you um, this, guys. That'll change. If farmers are Hopefully. allowed to grow hemp, is it going to put my neighbor Ron out of business with all the pot plants in his backyard? <laughs> no. Ron will never go out of business. Okay, because that's a good guy. <laughs> that's a craft. That's a craft product. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. You're right. Okay. Yeah. yeah. No, I don't think Ron will go out of business. No. Because right, Ron's a good guy. Ron's I just don't want to see real small Iowa farmers being put out of business. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> exactly. All right, man. So I guess uh, I don't really have anything else for you guys. Uh, I think you guys have answered all my questions. Uh, put up with some bullshit. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but one last thing for the road is what do you guys think is the most slept on thing in Sioux City? What is something that everybody should know about and everybody should be supporting and flocking to? You know, it might be oh. could be a place to eat, place to go, thing to do, event, maybe. In Sioux City. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What is getting slept on in Sioux City? Maybe I'll do, the I'll whole town. I'll do mine town? first. How about that? Yeah. <laughs> mine first is. You just got to come to Sioux City. Yeah, yeah. So first of all, come to Sioux City. I'll give you guys one for the, the example here is uh, I think that I went to Mardo Brewery for the first time. Okay. Um, uh, they they made a cool quality product. I had the uh, margarita pizza and I had the uh, sour beer. There was like something very sour and it uh, it was a little bit pinker than I would usually like to have a beer sitting in front of me be. You know, it's like Jesus Christ, what's this guy drinking over here? The pink right. beer. Pink beer. <laughs> so I I don't know, like, but I it was, it was a great beer. Was, but there was good, a few yeah. other uh, few You've other beers that. I tried. Yeah. So Matt's a brewer, so Matt knows about beer. Yeah. Oh yeah. So I, I, I mean, I've been to Mardo about four or five times, and the, they've been open a month or less. So I, they I, have I, their beer brewed now. Is there? Yeah. Yes. Yes. It's on tap now. Okay. Yep. Cool. Yeah. So I just like. Full disclosure, love the beer, love the pizza. It was a great, great atmosphere, great vibe, good service. So I think that it's a spot that everybody should check out when I they get I think so chance. too. Yeah. I think that's a great spot. Marty's, I think Brew City Brewery, mm-hmm. honestly. Um, Matt brews an amazing uh, cinnamon toast crush. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. Grapefruit yeah. beer? TM. <laughs> All kinds Grapefruit of good beer. beers? Yeah. 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 Yeah, the brewery scene's kind of finally hitting uh, yeah. Sioux City. It's popping off. Just kind of like the hemp scene is just finally it's really, hitting us. It, honestly, mm-hmm. yeah. And beer yeah. is a great social engagement, and it's cool that we have those things here, mm-hmm. right? right? It's cool that we have those things there. And, uh, you know, the museum, the walkways, the riverfront, I, you know, I, I don't know. I'm a skateboarder, so I'm looking for skate parks. We're building a skate park in Lamar's, Iowa. So if, Bird. hey, outside of Sioux City and Lamar's mm-hmm. neighboring town, new skate park going on up there. When is that going to be open? Uh, second week in August. We're pouring concrete tomorrow and Friday. Soon, yeah. Yeah, a couple weeks. Okay. Yeah. So okay. there's some things right. going off there. But Sioux City, man, what else is going on in Sioux I, City? I just think people have been sleeping on the whole uh, health and wellness aspect. Yes. Uh, the yoga studios have been blowing up. Mm-hmm. Uh, so right. a lot of people are tuning in to meditation and just living healthy, uh, right. which is kind of also just finally – coming around here, our, our diets in the Midwest have been uh, meat and potatoes for a long time. Yeah. Uh, and so we've got a good uh, farmer's market, you know, and so just all of those things are, are coming together. Yeah, because yeah. uh, it's a good point. I fly, right. I fly for like business. I get put on Southwest flights a lot and that's like a choose your own seat place. And like when you're out on the West Coast, East Coast, I don't mind flying Southwest so much, but I'm usually like the last person to board and in the Midwest, it can be tough finding a seat that still has <laughs> yep. both of the armrests. You know, Absolutely. Still so if everybody's on the health and wellness kick, I'm the health and it. wellness thing. Let's, yep. let's. I think that's what everybody's sleeping on in Sioux City. Exactly. Go. Yeah. Go to Evolve. Check out some of their yoga, their yoga stuff they've got going on. Top right. tier fitness. Mm-hmm. If Honestly, you want, if you want to do baby steps, maybe go to Beer Yoga at uh, Beer the yoga. Marquee. That's a good right? start. Yeah, yeah. That's the good Marquee's start. got it. Cone Park has it during okay. the summer too. So love it. Uh, Evolve puts that on. Super cool. Um, cool. Right. So, that's all I got for you guys. Where can people check you out at? Well, newcanada.com. Yeah. Uh, or you can N-U-K-A-N-A. come into the Ho Chunk building. Uh, we're there from two to six Monday Sweet through two Friday. Three. Sweet two two three. You're right. Yeah. 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 Uh, oh, did I say two thirty three? Like an idiot? I no, think you I said two two three. Oh, two two three. All right. Two twenty three. Yeah. yeah. Yep. You said um, it. And for me, if you can help me out by you know rating this on iTunes or leaving a thumbs up on YouTube, subscribing to the YouTube page, like in Honey Wave Media on Facebook. Uh, that'd be super great. I do this uh, just to give you guys an exposure to new things going on in Sioux City, and any support is highly appreciated. And until next time, this is the Sioux City Show. Thanks so much.